Hello everyone and thanks for tuning in to today's video. Today we have Jeremy Shoemaker of shoemoney.com. This guy's an expert at basically everything affiliate marketing. We're gonna be talking about affiliate marketing, Google AdSense, blogging, and much more. So thanks for being here, Jeremy. Thanks for having me, Zach, as always. Oh yeah, pleasure. definitely. We've known each other forever, so you're very famous for that Google AdSense check, 132,000 plus. Why don't you just tell us a little bit about that and how it happened? Yeah, that was quite an experience. You know, I built um, a mobile website um, around ringtones and wallpapers where people could upload their own. And then, uh, you know, t it, I called it categorize them at the time, um, which is now commonly referred to as tagging. So that's how I started with the site. And then it grew into where it was about 100,000 unique visitors a day. And then shortly thereafter, I got a call from Google AdSense and they said, we noticed you have all this traffic and we would give you a good revenue share, but start. And I was like, okay, well, can you walk me through it? So she helped me paste the code. I got feedback on it from her. And then, you know, within a couple of months, you see the check um, for over a hundred thousand dollars. It's a hundred and thirty some thousand dollars. Nice. And that was pretty much the most simple way to make money online was through Google AdSense. All you got to do is place a thing on the site. And then you learned about affiliate marketing. And how did you go from Google AdSense to affiliate marketing? Yeah, that's a that's a great question. Um, and one that I think a lot of people can learn from is, is in general, I, I never settle. And I always try to figure out like who's really winning here, which is one of the reasons why I had problems working for anyone ever. Because um, as the employee, you know, it's it's tough to win. And what I did was I, I basically through Google AdSense, you know, I could see the advertisers and and I always was like, well, how if these guys can afford to pay me, you know, two dollars per click on my ads, what are they doing? You know, like, how are they making money? So from there, you know, I, I basically tracked it down and it tracked down to affiliate marketing. And then I went directly to the affiliate network, got my own accounts with them and went from there and then then I became an advertiser you know um, and and really changed the the game for me because no longer was I I was actually advertising through Google AdWords or through other stuff and I had data because people were searching for ringtones and stuff like that so then I would bid on keywords or on sites based on the real-time data I had which was nobody else had that kind of data and it really worked out well and then it was just a matter of you know introduce me to affiliate marketing and then I just moved on to other uh, models and revenue streams and that's always been one of my favorite parts is figuring that out yeah very cool so you started off with your ringtone site doing Google AdSense and then you got into affiliate marketing and then you launched shoemoney.com and what's the story behind that site yeah, well, Shoe Money originally started in 2004 um, in July, so it's over 10 years old. Um, I started it basically um, as I was working on Next Pimp to start with, to kind of chronicle like what I was doing, you know, you know how I was doing it, what my plans were, and kind of just as a place. Um, I was on Digital Point, and people were like, "Oh, you should start a blog. You like contribute to all these people, but you know, you should have content on your site." Uh, more often so i got installed wordpress uh, actually it was php nuke at the time and then eventually migrated to wordpress when that launched or evolved i should say so um yeah i started the blog for that and then around 2005 or around 2007 six um actually over a year and a half after i got the adsense check um it, i had sent it around to some people um i never really like posted it publicly and somebody did post it publicly, but they said it was them. And so then I like cleared the air and was like, okay, this is mine. Here's how I did it. Because nobody's ever had one that big um, up until then or since because Google changed their rules like that month. It was, and I had no idea they were even doing this, but you can't get more than $10,000 via check um, anymore. They have to wire it. Right. So. It's kind of like an advantage that nobody else has or ever could have. Right. And what was the basis of the next pimp site that ba that it basically, how did it make so much money with Google AdSense? Well, I mean, people were, you know, there for ringtones. So it was just a, you know, it was a very common, there was all kinds of advertisers in that space, whether for ringtones or for other stuff. Um, I mean, specifically Google AdSense, it was just a, you know, I, I made the site, it blended so well with the Google AdSense, um, you know, it was in between listings and stuff and just generated, it had a very high click-through ratio and, you know, just 
tried to optimize that with colors and and stuff like that. So, right. and it back worked then, out well. yeah, and back then Google AdSense was it was a lot easier to make money with them versus how it is today. So, would you recommend people go after Google AdSense if they're just starting out, or focus more on affiliate marketing? Um, I think Google AdSense is a good place to start, just because you can just copy and paste the code on your website, right? Yeah. And and it's it doesn't take any sort of I mean. People out there all the time are asking me like, hey, should I buy this product? I want to make money online or should I do this or this? And I'm always like, you know, my first info product was a book on how to do HTML and programming. Like I, I had no idea, you know, how to, I had done some shell scripting um, at my previous job and some stuff like that. But, you know, for the most part, I, I had no, no idea how to do what I was trying to do. So, you know, that, that was my first investment was in myself and in my own education in, um, in PHP and learning HTML and that kind of stuff to, to do the website that I wanted to do. And um, does that answer your question? Yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. And so you, you created shoemoney.com to basically tell your story and spread the news. And you're no longer focusing on affiliate marketing and Google AdSense so much as your revenue paths because you've gone to the next level. You have shoe money and it helps you propel all of your new ideas and ventures. So how has that worked to basically bring your business and brand to a whole new level? Yeah, I mean, just in sharing my experiences, um, you know, with people and giving people value, um, you know, you build trust with them, you build loyalty. And when you create a product and you've already given them value, then they're, they're much more likely to do business with you because they feel like they owe you, you know? <laughs> and I, I, when I speak at conferences, I always joke around um, and I say, cause people are like, well, how, you know, how do these funnels work, all this stuff? And I said, listen, if you want to see how it works, go to shumai.com, opt in my pop-up box, whatever it is that month or that day and you're going to get a series of emails where i'm going to educate you i'm going to give you a ton of value and then i'm going to sell you something and you'll buy it and they all laugh laugh and i'm like you laugh but i'll see you buy it yeah. and and it's funny because they actually i don't know if they actually do but you know i mean i sell products every day i've got a ton of revenue streams automatically set up it's not my primary source of you know revenue um at times it's been a huge influx of revenue but like you were alluding to it is a monster place as a resource to launch anything that i'm doing i've had many companies in the past as of you um and to have a, a resource like that that's free you know is is literally priceless i mean it, it truly truly is priceless so you know it's it's always been you know great to have um i you know it's, it's just it's just such an amazing resource. Right, and for anybody who's trying to get into the game right now and think that it's way too saturated, whether it be affiliate marketing or building a personal brand or a blog, what would you say to them that it's not too late? Oh, I mean, it's some of the things are getting harder to do. I mean, but it's it's still a huge, huge opportunity, like, like an enormous opportunity out there. I think, for those people starting, a lot of times people are like, well, yeah, well, you're money, you've got this thing, you've got this. And I'm like, God, I envy you because you have a full-time job already. You have this, st this stable income. You can experiment. You can build a blog on WordPress.com. or I, I mean, off the top of my head, I can name three. Well, I can name Perez Hilton, who started on WordPress.com. Um, uh, MMAJunkie.com started as... Um, on a wordpress.com domain and um, let's see what's the other one I can ask cheeseburger all started all those domains are worth um, I think a junkie sold for 15 million to USA Today I know cheeseburger is private but um, they're trust me they're doing very very well um, and you know and then you've got like you know all these other bloggers that just started um, either and, and all three of those guys all started at Digital Point as well. Um, that I, I knew them from Digital Point forums, and a lot of other people started there as well. So everyone is just like you out there, and these platforms are free. They cost you no money to do, and all of these guys started with free platforms and built businesses that they either sold for, you know, tens of millions of dollars or whatever, or held on to them and ran them themselves. So the opportunity, that opportunity, still exists. You see sites pop up all the time. Um, you know, if you creating a product and selling that has gotten a lot harder online, creating your own products. 
Um, affiliate stuff is always evolving. I mean, it's, I, I mean, I don't want to say like it's harder. For me, it's harder because I don't have this giant ring torn resource um, that well dried up, um, af not after too long, just because of all these regulations and stuff about mobile billing. And then I sold that site. But um, for the most part, I think, so just to answer your question, I think like a lot of people just think like there's this huge barrier to entry. No, it's, it's, it's never been cheaper to do your own thing and it costs you absolutely nothing. Like you don't have to buy anything. You can find out all the information like digital point forms is free. There is, you know, over a decade of knowledge in there and a lot of it still applies you right. know, today. So it's amazing. You know, and, and it always bugs the crap out of me. Like I put together the shoe money system. I sold tons of it. I've sold, you know, tons of it. And now I give it away. And so you can get it by going shoemoney.com slash free SMS. And um, it's funny because people will ask me questions like, hey, you know, how do you recommend I get started? I'm like, well, I made this course. A couple of the things have changed some of the Facebook stuff, but all the principles remain the same. And it's it's a really good product and thing. And then and people will respond and say, well, is it, is it a scam? And I'm like, it's, it's, did you miss the part where it's free? I mean, sure. you know, it's, it's just, it's, it's an interesting time, you know, of how all that stuff, you know, and it's just weird. Like, you know, some people will, will say like, Hey, can you help me out? And I will actually give them like something that I'm doing right now. Like I just posted right. about how to make money with iPhones and I told people exactly what to do. I did it myself. And I'm gonna do a post next week talking about, I mean, I made money around 400 bucks and with two iPhones selling them, just walking into the, having, well, I'll, I'll walk through it in a post, but it's amazing how many questions you get about, well, what about the legalities of this? Or how do you, what about this? What if this happens? What if this, then I'm like, I don't, I don't know. And I don't think about that kind of thing. And if you're already coming up with excuses as to why you fail before you try, this probably isn't for you. Just putting it bluntly. Yeah, yeah definitely a good way to look at it because the internet is like the wild west and those who come in and basically create something amazing those are the ones that get like a billion dollar evaluation from companies and they just got bought up like youtube think of all the issues that they were going through and now google buys them and monetizes it like crazy right and i i you know my kind of three mantras that i live by is that i i blur the lines and take angles and shots and that's you have to do what other people aren't willing to do and it could be to work harder it could be to blur the lines morally ethically legally um not saying you have to do those things i'm just saying if you look at who's been successful you'll often find a past where they really went through some times where they were like are we gonna get in trouble for this you know and i mean with with my ringtone site i mean the content was like 95% copyright. Yeah. I mean, you know, I mean, it wasn't a big, all you do is look at the site. I knew, well, you know, I, I don't admit to too much liability because I, you know, whatever, but I did my best, you know, within reason to, uh, you know, keep that, keep that site, you know, um, how to encourage, let's just say, encourage people to um, share, you know, their own creations. Um, however, you know, I mean, there was there was many days. I originally had a partner in that site, um, which a lot of people don't know about, and some people know about it. But he wanted out so bad because he was like, "We're gonna go to jail. We're gonna do this." Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, "Okay, well then." And he actually returned every dollar. I think he brought over like a check for, I don't remember how much it was, but it was a lot of money. And he made me sign a thing releasing him from all liability and all this stuff. And I was like, what are you, what do I have to lose? Yeah, right. I mean, I'm not going to go to jail, right, for copyrights. I mean, I guess you could, but for the most part, I mean, you know, this was before DMCA. So there was a lot of, it was kind of scary in some of the things. And I got some really nasty letters from, you know, major record labels where my attorney was like, well... Remember that day we prepared for the rainy day? Mm -hmm. It could be coming, you know, and, and but I had factored that into my I mean, I had made millions of dollars with this website. So, you know, if I, you know, pushed the line and I ended up having to pay half a million, a million dollars in fines, what I, I made money, you know, and it's kind of the way I, I really didn't have anything to lose. You know, I didn't have a dollar to my name. And then I went from that to, you know, making a lot of, of cash. So 
I, I really didn't have anything to lose, much like a lot of your audience out there now. You know, I really envy the position that you're in because, you know, it's it's tough. And, and we talked about this a couple minutes before the show. When you have your own, you know, company and you, you got this overhead and all this other stuff, you know, it's it sucks. And, you know, it's like, gosh, man, back in the days, you know, before I had all this overhead and all this stuff, it was it was so nice to wake up in the morning and not not know that you've got to make um, five grand today just to break even. Right. It's kind of a nice feeling. I mean, you know, so a lot of these people who think they have, you know, like I'm in this great situation better than theirs. You know, I, I don't think they they don't realize that I got to make five grand every day, every day before I could make a dollar. Right. And so a lot of times I look at them and be like, gosh, you're five thousand dollars richer every morning when you wake up than oh, I have. Yeah. You know, when you look at it like that now, yeah, I've got revenue coming in. But I mean, you know, there's months that go by and I'm sure everyone, you know, thinks it's all great. And I, I talk about my lows as much as my highs. I mean, there's been times where, you know, I've lost a couple hundred grand in, you know, six months. And sometimes I'm like, God, is this worth it? You know, like I'm so focused on this other thing. Is it really worth it? And then you you get through the dip and you come out strong. And, you know, I have I've never have lost money in a physical year in 13 years so you know and and that goes back to the days where i was just buying and selling computers and stuff but since shoe money has been incorporated for 13 years i've never lost money but i mean there's been times i've been down a couple hundred thousand dollars you know and had to figure out some things and get some other things going but in affiliate marketing it's crazy how fast things can change um how fast they can go bad and how fast they can change that's a world that i'm evolving out of but um, I'm, I'm trying to evolve past that. And it's mostly a lifestyle thing. Like I'm gonna, I don't know that I'll ever be able to get out of affiliate marketing because I just love it so much. And um, it's, it's gonna be really hard for me to stay away from it. I think it'll always be a hobby of mine. Um, so, you know, I mean, but it's, it's tough, you know? Yeah. You know, it's just tough. Yeah, I, I, no, and for those, for those who are, you know, staying in the basement, making money, <laughs> So I'm telling you, when I when I decided that I was going to get out and get all these employees, I had companies, so many friends and companies that were like, I'm trying to be like you. What are you doing, you know, doing this? And I didn't, I had no idea the pains that come with managing employees and oh my goodness, all this stuff. Wow, that's not, a, yeah, not a good time. Um, really sucks <laughs> at times. Just yeah. really sucks. So basically everybody out there listening really can appreciate the value that is out there. Just making slow money at a pace that you enjoy while being able to maintain a lifestyle and that's pretty much attainable through affiliate marketing and the internet without having to put a lot of money out there. Or just Absolutely. like starting a job where you're going to be putting in so much time but limited on what you can do. Yeah, absolutely. A thousand percent. Yeah, and you've basically done this by always providing a service to people or giving them content that they want. And like you did through shoemoney.com, you built a brand that people come to strictly because they trust and they want to hear what you have to say. Absolutely. And if you look at my model, it's always been the same thing. Everything I've ever had consists of the same formula. I mean, I've always, every time I've built a product or service that I wanted for myself because I felt that there was nothing out there that was doing what I wanted, go back to the first thing in ringtones. Right. That's exactly what I did. And then I opened it to everyone else. I did that with a thing called shoe money ads. I made it for myself because it had look and feel of AdSense, but I could put whatever ad I wanted in there. And then I opened it up to other people for free. And then it became auction ads, which was a company that I later sold. I mean, it, just everything, shoe money tools, you know, all these things out there were things that I wanted for myself. I built them for myself and they were fun because they were tools that I wanted. Right. And so for those people who, you know, ask me like, oh, what should I do? What's your big tip? You know, and I'm like, I'm like, well, what do you like to do? You know, and then it's funny. They're like, well, um, make money. Well, yeah, but don't we all? But actually making money is a side effect. I mean, it, it's what a lot of people. It's not it's not really like, you know, you know what I mean? Like people think money is the end all be all. There's a lot of things to get to that point. And so you know, I'm like, okay, back up, back up, back up. Like what, 
what are you doing tonight? Like, are you going are you going to play pool? Are you into sports or whatever? And around here, Nebraska Cornhuskers, huge. Everyone's a football fan. And I'm like, okay, well, you know, what if you, you know, start, you know, a football blog and just talk about the game, talk about the players, you know, be yourself and don't, don't try to be a news site, you know, or whatever. Just get started, you know, and then, you know, put – you can put an affiliate offer on it, you know, for people, for whatever. And then, you know, it just amazes me how little people want to do for themselves. And in talking, I was talking with Neil Patel the other day about this exact thing. Um, and it was mostly like I, I had him on my radio show and I said to him, you know, what is your, what do you say to people? Because it's the same questions I get 80 million times that I'm sure you do as well. You know, is how do I get started? What do I do? And he said, a lot of times that people ask me, how do I get started? I tell them it's not for them. Because if they haven't gone to Google and done any research and don't know any of the terminology, like what affiliate marketing is or what anything is, or just making money online in general, then it's it's not going to work. Right. And I've come to find out that's a reality. I still try to help people. But it's, it, it generally doesn't work. I mean, honestly, people who have done their homework, though, or have a site and are trying yeah. and you can share an experience with them that you've had. It's that's a different story, you know. So I'm a guy who I don't like to tell people what to do. If, if somebody says like, hey, I'm thinking about doing this. What do you think? I always say the same thing. Like, look, I'm not going to tell you what to do. But, you know, when I had this company, I did this. And, you know, and here was the results. And then, you know, they, they take from that what they will. And, you know, you can either you can either take what I said and go nuts with it or not. And most people find value in that. And plus, you know, I didn't I don't have the responsibility of telling them what to do. Because the bottom line is, I don't know the answer. I can share with you what happened to me and what I did. And that's what I do on my blog. And it really resonates with people. It helps them, you know, and um, I think that's the big thing is I, I, I people are always like, well, who do you follow? You know, who did you learn from? And I always say the same thing. Like, I listen to everyone, but I don't really follow anybody. Like, I think Tim Ferriss is brilliant. Seth Godin's brilliant. Guy Kawasaki, brilliant. Um, you know, all people that have spoken at my events or done things uh, I've met briefly and some I know a little bit better than others. But they haven't done what you're doing. And most of them have never, well, you know, Guy Kawasaki was an employee at Apple and hasn't really done anything since. Right. But, you know, I mean, Tim Ferriss has done some things, but nothing like, you know, he doesn't run a day-to-day -day company. I mean, I know he does some of the things, you know. I mean, there's there's Cali. Seth Godin was a part of Yo-Yo Dying, you know, sold and whatnot, but hasn't really done anything successful since. But these guys are looked up to. So, you know, for them, I'd much rather go to you know, anyone who's doing anything and watch them on what they do every day, because that's the sad reality is these guys have great theories and ideas, but they're so far removed from any of your struggles or what you're doing that, you know, listening to them. I mean, I take it with a grain of salt. I mean, I listen to them and a lot of times they'll spur ideas like Seth Godin's Purple Cow, a huge fan. Um, his, you know, all whatever liars all marketers are liars which is now like all he renamed the liars part <laughs> storytellers i think is what he renamed it to but i thought it is it was excellent excellent book and it really spurred a lot of ideas i didn't follow any of the game plans but you know same thing with tim ferris stuff some of it i you know listened to and thought oh i'm gonna try that you know and it makes a difference but i don't follow anyone and i don't want people to follow me and that was a long answer to a very short <laughs> thing no, that's great. It's the back end story that most people don't talk about. So it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. And just one last question. Any words of advice for people who are getting into this space? They don't really, they're trying to look for the immediate results, but it's a very long term game and how to look long term. Yeah, um, it, this might be, how long do we have? As long as you got. Okay, because there's a couple of things I always say. One is like always invest in yourself. Like take a set a percentage of your profit and allocate that to reinvest in yourself, whether it's books or a, you know a, an info product or anything. Um, you know the other the other things are really like you know always try to connect with like-minded people and have routine calls or discussions with them. Um, always welcome adversity. Um, when you when you 
the times that you're most down and whatever are the times when you look back, you will really appreciate because a lot of times they'll force you to do things that you wouldn't have done when you were complacent in businesses and it, you'll be so much more successful for it. So whenever we experience adversity, it's always a huge opportunity to do things. And I could give countless examples, but we're out of time. So really those are the keys i mean invest in yourself you know there's no reason why you can't get a book on html and php and write a cool application that says whatever it does and learn something and then you can take that and build the next next pimp or the but you know whatever just anything that some of the dumbest sites out there like that stupid cat site i can ask cheeseburger who my friends run um you know site does it's got like half a million visitors a month or i'm sorry a day a day on fail blog and all that stuff. How hard is that to make people upload pictures and label them? All right, so my point is free resources are out there. Invest in yourself. When you come up against the wall and you feel hopeless, understand everyone goes through that. And then, you know, just keep treading forward. Nice. That's so. how you got to do it. All right, all right, Jeremy, thanks so much for being here. And I'm sure our audience are going to head over to shoemoney.com and see everything that you've written over the years. Thanks. Thanks, Zach, a lot. And I appreciate all the help you've given me and support. And I look forward to uh, talking further. So, Likewise. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for watching this latest video. I know I cover a lot of topics and resources for you to work with. So I actually created a blogging resources page for you to go to and see everything in one simple area. You can access that page by going to blogging.org and clicking on the resources button or you can simply go to blogging.org slash resources. From here, you're gonna see all of my recommended tools, solutions, basically everything I use to grow my website, blog, and business to what it is today. You're also gonna see my latest courses on there as well, so be sure to check it out at blogging.org slash resources, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.